What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today we've got an extremely special topic. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get straight into this. It's how to manage your money and based off of the title, this is a fact. This is the only video you need on personal finances. And it's not just because I have all the answers in this video alone, it's because not only am I gonna share with you the steps to get to where you need to be, but also each step is gonna have a video or a playlist recommended to go with it. So without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into this topic and I'm telling you, this video is pure gold, so make sure you're paying very close attention because this video isn't just about how to manage money, it's how to make sure your money isn't managing you. So if you see me look down, I have some notes to keep me on track in this video so I don't get too sidetracked. So the first thing is to know where you are. And you've probably heard that in a few of my previous videos, you've probably heard me say the phrase, look at yourself in the mirror, that's basically saying to look at your bank account, but I'm gonna go deeper in this video. You need to know things like exactly down to the cent, how much debt you're in, what the interest rates are in that debt. You need to understand how much money is in your savings account. You need to understand exactly how much money you take home per year, not gross income. I'm talking about net income. After taxes, how much money are you bringing in every single year? You need to know what your bills look like. Oh, we're going to talk about it today. What your rent looks like, what your utilities look like, what your car note looks like. If you have a car note, Spotify, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, if you have a pet, how much you're paying extra for your rent because you have a pet, how much it costs a year to take them to the vet, all of that stuff. And you need to be honest with yourself because the only way you're gonna take yourself from where you are to where you need to be, you're gonna to need to understand exactly where you're at financially in all aspects, not just how much you're making, but how much you owe and how much you wanna have in your savings account. This is gonna take you so much further than you would than if you just didn't do it at all. And it's not just about knowing exactly where you are. It's also about knowing who you are as a person. What are your tendencies? What are your impulses? Are you the type of person that wants to go out to eat all the time? Are you the type of person who likes to look fresh all the time, have a nice watch all the time, have nice shoes all the time? What type of person are you? And what things do you want to do with your money? And outside of that, what things bother you about your money? Is it the fact that Gosh, every time the 16th of the month hits and I get that paycheck, most of it's completely gone and I have to scrape pennies for the rest of the month until I get my next paycheck. Is that something that frustrates you? Does it frustrate you that you wish you were making more money? Does it frustrate you that you can't provide for your family or for yourself the way that you want to? What things frustrate you about your money? Is it the fact that you can't put as much money towards your debt every month? Is it the fact that you wish you had more than a couple hundred dollars in your savings account? What is it? What is your frustration? Write every single one of them down because if you don't, they'll just haunt you in the back of your mind until the end of time basically because there's these thoughts that you're gonna have subconsciously, right? but you're not gonna really be able to do anything about it until you're able to really pinpoint the problem and how many problems actually exist. It could be a few problems, it could be one or two problems, but you need to address them and the first step is to write them down. What are your frustrations? And then we're gonna jump into step two of this how to manage your money video. Step two is addressing every single thing that you wrote down. What is your plan and what are you going to do about it? Because the thing about it is all of us have financial goals. All of us make money, but we want improvement somewhere. But there's a big difference between where we want to be and where we need to be. Where we need to be is where we want to focus. I could say I wish I was making a million dollars a month, but I know good and well that ain't happening right now. That's why step number one is so important to know where you're at and know how far off you are from where you wanna be. But where you need to be is a completely different story. Where you need to be might be, I need to be in a financial position where I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I need to be in a financial position where I'm not in any debt or I have at least five figures in my savings account. That's the financial position that I need to be in. You need to understand what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate when it comes to your personal finances. You need to understand that if you're making 50 grand a year right now, but you wanna be making 75, and it's a big priority for you to hit 75 for various reasons, i.e. provisional purposes, being able to save more, being able to invest in one of your passions, whatever the case is. What is that reason? And then 
is it where you want to be or where you need to be? And if it's where you need to be, you need to go gung-ho for that. I remember being in a position right after I got out of college, and I'm so thankful that I just have this type of mindset because I'm able to share it with you. But I just got out of college, and my goal all throughout college was to, man, I want to at least make over 55. I want to at least make 60K a year, at least. And when I got out, sure enough, the exact salary that I was offered was 60 grand a year. Of course, I had bonuses and stuff like that on top of it. And I had overtime opportunities that I didn't know about on top of it. But the base salary at the time was 60 grand a year. And I could have been like, oh, well, I hit my goal. I'm good. Nah, as soon as I hit that, I was like, man, this isn't enough. This isn't as much as I thought it was going to be because I never made 60 grand a year before. And I also had to remember I wasn't really making 60 grand a year. I was bringing home something like maybe 47, 500 a year. That's more realistic because all those taxes definitely chopped a lot of money off the plate. And so I was, I was already thinking about, okay, well, what's next? Do I need to move up at work? Do I need to work a bunch of overtime? Do I need to have a side business on the side? Because I had all those things going. Because I was happy and grateful for where I was at, but I knew that it wasn't going to be enough for my future endeavors. I knew that I wanted to have a wife and kids. I knew I wanted to have a lot of money in my savings. I knew that I wanted to have money working for me, but I knew I couldn't just get to all those places with just the amount of money that I was making. Because I'm the type of man that whenever I do have a wife, whenever I do have kids and things like that, I want her to have the choice the opportunity to say, well, I want to stay at home with the kids. That's what I want. So knowing what I want, that made me put in that category, okay, this isn't where I want to be. This is where I need to be financially, and I'm going to get there. And there's just a certain relentlessness that comes with that. There's a certain amount of fire and drive that comes with that. And it has to be something that there's no discouraging statement. There's no negativity that can get in your way and stop you from where you know you are going to go. You have to tell yourself, I am going to get here. And here is my plan on getting here. You have to organize your finances. You have to see exactly where you're at. You have to budget your money. Check out my budgeting video, how to master your budget. And then also check out my other video about how to double your savings. That's also going to help you master your budget. Watch both of those videos and you will get the skill down. It's going to take some practice, but I promise you, you will get there because I've taken all the guesswork out of it and I've given you a streamlined formula for how to complete this in the best way possible. And then you want to write your goals down because between where you want to be and where you need to be, there's going to be a miniature set of goals that you need to complete in order to get there. If you want to get to 20 grand in your savings account, you got to start with a thousand. And before you get to a thousand, you got to start with a hundred, a few hundred, however much you can do until you get up to a thousand. You keep working your way up and then you keep seeing how much you can minimize the amount of time you get to each goal. Because if it took you two months to hit a thousand dollars, well, how can I make sure I get to two thousand in one month? Cut the time in half. I'm getting fired up in this video, but this is an extremely passionate topic. And saving money goes hand in hand with debt, so I'm not going to really go into that much stuff. All I'm going to say about debt is if the interest rate is high, that needs to be the priority. If the interest rate is low, you can pay it off slowly. You don't want to drag your feet on nothing, but you can take more of your time on paying off the debt while you build your savings if the interest rate is much, much lower. But these are all the fundamentals. If you get step one and two under control, your financial life is going to get so much easier. And as we get into step three, which, by the way is to learn, improve, and make more money. Because the biggest pain point everyone has is not so much, how do I save money? It's not so much, how do I get out of debt? The biggest pain point is, well, I understand the fundamentals of how to do those things. I understand how to put some money away. The problem is, I'm not making enough money. So how do I make more money? First of all, you need to learn some more. And you can learn things as simple as how to budget, how to save, and that's great. But those things are only a portion of how to get your finances under control. That's only a portion of how to manage your finances. But what about the emotional stimuli that cause you to spend so much, that cause you to have all your financial weaknesses in one bucket, and then here we go, now I'm splurging. Okay, I just got a bonus. Boom, burned through 2000 already. Boom. Gosh, I just, I really wanted that TV. I really wanted that watch. I just, I just had to. No, you didn't. But, but are you educating yourself on the psychology around money? Are you educating yourself smart things to do with your money that can actually make more money for you? 
because my book happens to go into all of that. It goes into the basics of how to deal with your finances and how to manage your finances, but it also goes way in depth on things like pain points, on things like not having enough money, on things like what your why is and why you're going for this amount of money and why you're going for a certain career and why you're deciding to build your own business, how to make money in your sleep. I done did all of that and I'm showing you how to do it, but in my book, The Wealth Journey, check it out. But you don't just have to read my book. You don't have to read my book at all if you don't want to. I would appreciate it. It's packed full of value, but... I'm encouraging you to just read up on anything you can find that's going to be of value to you when it comes to your personal finances. But the problem is a lot of us don't like to read. And that's why when it comes to anything of value, you can hide it from a bunch of people just by putting it in a book because people would rather watch a video. People would rather have someone pull them to the side and, and just tell them all the game, all the information right up front. But the thing is, it takes time. To go through all the information. This one video right here isn't even going through all the information. That's why I have video recommendations that come with each topic that I'm talking about in this video because each piece of information I'm giving you in this video is linked to like another 20 to 30 minutes worth of information. So you have to constantly consume information and I recommend doing so on a daily basis. That's what I do and I'm the one making these videos. So if I'm making these videos and I'm still consuming financial content every single day to learn something, even if it's something that I already know, I can maybe learn a different perspective. I can maybe learn a different mindset. All of it's valuable. And with that new mindset, you keep improving. And the biggest thing I learned is I need to find a way to not only increase my income, but to make money in my sleep. See, I didn't learn all of that stuff in school. I didn't learn about that stuff growing up. I didn't know that type of thing was possible. I just thought you had to work a lot of hours or make a lot of money per hour to make a lot of money per year. But that is not the case. You can build things that make money for you around the clock, whether you're sleeping, eating, using the bathroom, it don't matter. You can be making money around the clock. And the whole pain point is, I want to make more money. But the reason I teach you how to manage the money you have before you make the money is simply because you can, you can make a million dollars a year, but if you spend a million dollars a year, well, guess freaking what? You're in the same exact spot of someone who's making 50K a year and spending 50K a year. It's less than ideal. You maxed out your salary and you're living paycheck to paycheck. That's not what we want. We want some cushion. We want some difference between the amount of money that you're saving and the amount of money that you're spending. We want some difference between how much you're investing and how much you're spending. Because that's how you build wealth. That's how you become wealthy. Check out my book. That may have been an aggressive pitch, but in all seriousness, it can help you out some. It's on Amazon. It's at a pretty good price. Check it out. You never know what might happen. But anyway, when you're on your journey to actually make more money, just look at skills that are high paying. I promise you it's not difficult to find. There's not that many skills that are high paying, first of all. So like you're going to have a good amount to choose from, but it's not like so much that you don't know what to choose, in my humble opinion. Like anything that's projecting the world forward. I mean, think about think about the health industry. Think about the dental industry. Think about technology, think about cybersecurity, things like that. So if you just look into those fields, highest paying fields, and then highest paying profession within those fields, you can find out what skills and what you need to know. And you don't necessarily have to go to college. You could take a few courses online. You can learn how to code. You can learn how to do a lot of things. Information is a lot different nowadays. And a lot of times, workplaces just want the experience. They could care less if you have a degree. I'm not saying all places are like that. But you can make a lot of money. You can make 60, 70, 80 grand a year without a college degree. Easily. You can do it. But you need to do your own research and look up how to do it. But I will say in my book, it does disclose the highest paying fields and how much you would expect to get and exactly how to get jobs in them. And it also gives you interviewing advice on from A to Z, how to interview, how to dress, how to present yourself, how your body language is extremely important voice projection, all that good stuff. And it's not just any Joe Smo off the street just telling you how to interview. Like, no, I'm telling you, this is how you can get six-figure jobs. And I've helped people get six-figure jobs. So that's how I know this advice works. But you want to do your research on those skills, get the skills, make more money. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But it's also not easy being in a place that you don't want to be in. It's, just, it's not easy being in a less than desirable financial situation where you're concerned all the time and when you can barely sleep at night because you know you wish you had more money and you know 
oh, if this paycheck doesn't come through, I'm done. If I mess up at work and I get fired, I'm done. I don't have an emergency fund. I don't have a savings account. What am I going to eat next? Those thoughts are not easy to have. So I would much rather sacrifice some fun, take a little bit of time out of my day, even if it's every single day for the next five years, I will do what it takes to get out of a less than desirable situation because I will not suffer and it is only my responsibility to ensure that I do not suffer. No one else's. There's no blame games. There's no victim. There's no nothing. I'm not a victim. I am in control. And that's the mindset that you need to have. And before I get to the next topic, I'm going to tell you something. When we get to step one, step two, step three, it's easy to get to a point of comfort where you're like, okay, I'm moving a little bit forward. Or or maybe you're not moving forward at all and you're just like, man, this is taking too long, but I want to have fun. I want to enjoy myself. I want to treat myself. And then you start saying the the D word to yourself. "I, I deserve to have these things. We're not here to talk about what you deserve. Life is unfair, and it is unfair to absolutely everybody. Bad people get good things that they don't deserve all the time. Good people get bad things that they don't deserve all the time. So obviously life and the world and everything around you does not care about what you deserve. I want you to start thinking about what you've earned. Have you put the work in to earn what you have? Have you done the stuff that it takes to earn the amount of money that you want to have? Because this is what I want to say to you. Being a good person, being a genuine person, being an amazing human being who has a big heart and wants to give. And if I had this much money, I would do this for these people. That's great. That is fantastic. That has nothing to do with you getting that money in your pocket. You have to go out there. You have to work. You have to spend the hours, the grind. And I'm not glorifying the grind. I'm not saying you should neglect all of your sleep for a prolonged amount of time or even at all. I'm saying you need to get your priorities straight and focus because it doesn't take that long to get to where you need to get to. College took me four years. In the grand scheme of my entire life, which I'm 27 right now, four years out of 27 ain't that much. But it propelled me toward a goal that I had at that time. And that was purely to make a pretty good salary right out of college. So I'd be a few steps ahead of my peers who did not. Now, is that going to be true for everyone? No, there's some people who are going to graduate from high school and then just kill it and then be a millionaire and be better off than anyone that they know that went to college. I'm just telling you, that was my mindset and that was my goal. You have to understand that everything in life takes time to get to where you want to get to. And the reason I'm bringing up this deserving stuff, have you done the work to be deserving of the results that you want? Because step number four is to have your money work for you in the background. But if you don't work on the front end and get a bunch of money and learn how to manage your money, if you can't do those two things, then it's going to be very hard to get your money to work for you because you're not going to have any money to work with. We're talking about having thousands of dollars on the side eventually. You may only have a hundred at first a month to invest or to, you know, put towards something that's going to get you money. That's fine. But I'm talking about if you're able to continuously gain more money per year and keep your expenses the same, live below your means, check out that video, and you're able to manage it properly and do the smart things with it, then you're going to end up having thousands on the side to then put into the best companies in the world that will then give you a return. I made 1200 and something dollars the other day just in the stock market, just for my money sitting in there. But I chose the right investments to give me that type of return. And the thing is, the stock market is down right now. It's not up. But because I made the wise decisions and I learned and continuously learned every single day for years about investing and I didn't stop and I kept buying books and I'm still buying books on investing, that's going to keep... That's going to keep feeding my mind what it needs to keep getting the results. I'm putting in the work. So five years, 10 years from now, when my account is looking stupid, I'm talking deep in the seven figures, I'm going to be chilling. I have afforded myself the lifestyle. I have afforded myself the luxury to make money in my sleep. But you can't go through that without going through a little something sometimes. And that's just a fact. I absolutely hated my first ever job and I went through that and it was almost a two year experience of turmoil, but I got through it and because I got through it and I had a plan and I knew where I wanted to be and where I needed to be, I needed to be in a different company that paid me more money. So that was what I did. 
one of the easiest ways to make money is by putting your money into the best companies in the world. You're walking around with an iPhone. You probably use Microsoft products. You probably use Google every single day when you don't know something. And even if you're one of the few people in the world who don't use Google, there's Bing, which is a Microsoft product. You probably use LinkedIn to get your profile out there to show everybody that you're a good professional and that you want a job and that you're willing to work and that you have these set of skills, another Microsoft product. You probably shop on Amazon all the time. You probably like to stream on Twitch sometimes. Amazon, you get what I'm saying? These are Amazon products. Amazon owns Twitch. So if you, so I'm not telling you straight up to invest in those companies. I'm telling you those are examples of the best companies in the world and how if you spend, let's say, $1,000 on Amazon.com or if you spend $1,000 on a brand new iPhone like most people did, that's great. And you do get a temporary value out of that for a few years. But if you do the same thing inside of a company that is high performing, that is one of the best companies in the world, in a few years, that $1,000 could be $2,000, $3,000. You don't know how much multiples these things can grow over the years. But I'll tell you what, you'll have more money than you would than if you spent that $1,000 on the iPhone and on Amazon.com. That's all I'm saying. So I think it would behoove you to actually learn about how to make money in your sleep. It's actually really, really interesting. I could make a ton of videos about it, but seriously, I don't get that much demand on this channel. So if you want me to make investing videos, put it in the comments. I've been telling y'all I'm going to make investing videos in the future. I will, but I want to understand how much demand there is and what questions you guys have for investing videos. Everyone seems to be so interested in how to save money, but I'm literally telling you that's part of it. What about making more money? What about having a side hustle? What about having a side business? What about making your money work for you on the side where you can you could have $10,000 turn into over $100,000? That's what I'm getting at. What I'm telling you is if you just use the money that you do have wisely, you could make multiples of what you're making right now. But it's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take a little bit of boredom probably because you're not going to be super interested in these things. But this is how you make money. And if you just sacrifice a couple years of your life, I promise you, you're going to be fine. You're going to come out of it alive. But if you just sacrifice a few years of your life and dedicate a few years of your life to these things, you could be so much further along that in you know the next decade or so, you can just be chilling, having passive income. That's what I'm talking about. And so lastly, is to sustain where you're at. One of the worst things you can do is not sustain it and not sustain your habits because then you start spending loosely and then your money starts going down. You hear about all these famous actors, rappers, singers, artists, and everything in between lose money and go bankrupt. You don't want that to be you. You don't want to do all these things just because now, okay, yeah, woo, I got all this money. You always want to maintain humility and you always want to maintain that headspace of I'm grateful for what I have. And if you're truly grateful for what you have, you won't just be spending willy nilly on a bunch of things that you don't need. I said what I said and you want to be consistent. Like for example, with this YouTube channel, I've been consistent. There's been times where I haven't been consistent and as a result, the money went down. I went from like a thousand to a few hundred dollars per month on my YouTube channel purely because of consistency, purely because of me getting into my own head and things of that nature and not planning and not preparing like I should. And that's a lesson that I've learned from. And if that if I've learned anything throughout this year and last year combined, that would be the number one thing. You've got to be consistent because just because I'm doing good doesn't mean I need to get complacent. Because like at work, I notice my drive is extremely endless at work. I never, never, ever, ever stop at work. But when it comes to doing stuff for myself, I'm like, ugh, I don't feel like it today. Nah, forget that. I don't care if you don't feel like it. You're going to get to work today. You're going to put in these hours for these YouTube videos today. You're going to give your audience what they want today. And that's just something that I had to learn myself. So it's not this video, this advice isn't just for you. It's also to my past self who didn't know these things. I wish I would have seen this video years ago when I was 21 years old. And lastly, the most important thing is knowing when to, to stop. You know, once you've hit a certain amount of money that you know that you wanted and, you know, inflation isn't a problem, money isn't an issue, everybody is happy, you're able to provide, you're able to 
fulfill all those pain points that you've ever had and you're able to cure that pain and you're, you don't feel it anymore, you can understand when it's time to, okay, I'm not gonna do another thing. I'm not gonna spend another hour over what I'm already doing. You know what I mean? There's no need to go harder about certain things in life. You can continue doing what you're doing at the exact cadence that you're doing it unless you see something fall back. But for the most part, and I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day, once you make a certain amount of money, there's a time where, okay, you're good. Keep doing what you're doing, but you don't have to go after another venture now. You don't have to go after another opportunity to make more money now if you don't want to. Am I telling you you have to or that you definitely need to? No, I'm saying knowing when to stop can be very powerful because you can start to get into trouble with your family, your wife, your husband, whoever, right? If you keep going for things and you start to get greedy. All I'm saying, don't get overzealous, don't get too greedy get to where you want to get to, sustain it, be consistent, go from there. But that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.